Moving on to our next video on how to pass the Pediatric Advanced Life Support Certification Like a Boss series is Respiratory Emergencies in PALS. So let's talk about some upper airway obstructions. This consists of the nose, the pharynx, and the larynx. Causes can be croup, anaphylaxis, foreign body aspirations is a big one, and upper airway obstructions. Assessments include increased respiratory rate, strider is a hallmark sign of upper airway obstructions, barking cough, hoarseness, drooling, snoring, or gurgling sounds. So let's look at the management of respiratory emergencies flowchart. We want to maintain airway positioning, suction as needed, provide oxygen, pulse oximetry, ECG monitoring as needed, BLS as indicated. So with upper airway obstructions with croup, we want to give nebulized epinephrine and corticosteroids. Anaphylaxis, we're going to give IM epinephrine or an auto injector. Albuterol, antihistamines, and corticosteroids. And with the aspiration form body, we want to allow a position of comfort and seek a specialty consultation depending on how big that form body is. Moving on to lower airway obstructions, this consists of the lower airways, such as the trachea, the bronchi, and the bronchioles. Causes can be bronchitis and asthma. Assessment, you're going to have an increased respiratory rate. You're going to have expiratory wheezing in a prolonged expiratory phase. So the management of lower airway obstructions is really the same as the management of upper airways obstructions. However, we treat the causes a little bit differently. So with bronchiolitis, we're gonna be using nasal suctioning as well as bronchial dilator trials. With asthma, we're gonna be treating with albuterol plus or minus the epitropium, corticosteroids, subcutaneous epinephrine, magnesium sulfate, or tributylene. Lung tissue disease is described as a disease involving a substance of the lung, such as the parenchyma or tissue. The lungs become stiff due to fluid accumulation in the alveoli, interstitium, or both. Causes can be pneumonia, pneumonitis, pulmonary edema, or acute respiratory distress syndrome, ARDS. Assessment would include increased respiratory rate, grunting, crackles, and decreased breath sounds. The treatment of lung tissue disease really is the same as all the other disorders. However, it is different depending on what we're treating. So pneumonia, pneumonitis, whether it is infectious, chemical, or aspiration, includes albuterol, antibiotics as needed, and we might even consider a CPAP. Pulmonary edema, whether it be cardiogenic or non-cardiogenic, such as ARDS, we want to consider non-invasive or invasive ventilatory support with PEEP. We want to consider vasoactive support and maybe even consider diuretics. Lastly, we have disordered control of breathing that can result from a host of conditions, including neurological disorders such as seizures, central nervous system infections, head injuries, brain tumors, hydrocephalus, neuromuscular disease, or increased intracranial pressure. Additional causes can be metabolic abnormalities, drug overdoses, or even poisonings. On assessment, we're going to hear variable decreased respiratory rates and efforts. Breath sounds are usually normal. So with increased intracranial pressure, we're going to avoid hypoxemia, we want to avoid hypercarbia, and we also want to avoid hypothermia. So we're going to treat those. Poisoning and overdoses, we want to look for the antidote if there is an antidote available, and we want to contact the poison control. Lastly, neuromuscular disease, we want to consider non-invasive or invasive ventil ventilatory support because these patients might not be able to maintain their airway. If the respiratory failure needs rescue breaths, the provider should provide two breaths each over one second. You want to see chest rise and fall to confirm appropriate rescue breaths. Patients should be placed in the sniffing position for optimization of rescue breaths. This requires the flexion and extension of the head and neck using the EC method with a bag valve mask. Refer to the images that are on the slide. Intubation of the pediatric patient. Though it is covered in the PAL certification, it is not practiced unless the provider is a respiratory therapist or has a respiratory role. They do, however, cover how to detect sudden deterioration in an intubated patient using the DOPE mnemonic. 
Displacement of the two may be displaced out of the trachea or advanced into the right or left main bronchus. Right bronchus advancement is more common. Obstruction of the two, obstruction can be caused by secretions, blood, pus, foreign bodies, or kinking of the tube. Pneumothorax can either be simple or tension. Simple pneumothorax results in sudden deterioration in oxygenation and decreased chest expansion with loss of breath sounds on the involved side. Tension pneumothorax results in simple pneumothorax signs with evidence of hypotension and a decrease in cardiac output. Lastly, equipment failure, disconnection of the oxygen supply from the ventilatory system, leak in the ventilatory circuit, failure of power supply to the ventilator, malfunction of valves in the bag or the circuit. Lastly, we want to look at the early and late signs of tissue hypoxia. Tissue hypoxia is defined as a decrease in arterial oxygen saturation below 94%, detected on a pulse oximetry or arterial blood gas sample. Early signs of tissue hypoxia include fast respiratory rate, tachypnea, increased respiratory effort such as nasal flaring and retractions, or tachycardia. Agitation, anxiety, and irritability are also noted. Late signs of tissue hypoxia include a slow respiratory rate, rhetopenia, an inadequate respiratory effort, or apnea. Still increased respiratory effort, but this time you might see head bobbing, a seesaw respiration, or even grunting. Bradycardia is noted, and decreased level of consciousness. You might note pallor, molting, and cyanosis in both early and late respiratory emergencies. I hope this video was helpful for you in passing your PAL certification like a boss. If you're ready to move on to the next video in this series, click the video.